Friends, this is your English lesson. In this lesson, we will read unit number six, the selfish giant from Oxford Reading Circle Six. So let's get started. Every afternoon, as they were coming from school, the children used to go and play in the giant's garden. It was a large, lovely garden with soft green grass. Here and there, over the grass stood beautiful flowers like stars, and there were twelve peach trees that, in the springtime, broke out into delicate blossoms of pink and pearl, and in the autumn, bore rich fruit. The birds sat on the trees and sang so sweetly that the children used to stop their games in order to listen to them. How happy we are here! They cried to each other. One day, the giant came back. He had been to visit his friend, the Cornish ogre, and had stayed with him for seven years. After the seven years were over, he had said all that he had to say, for his conversation was limited, and he determined to return to his own castle. When he arrived, he, wa he saw children playing in the garden. What are you doing there? he cried in a very gruff voice. Gruff, rough and low in pitch. And the children ran away. My own garden is my own garden, said the giant. Anyone can understand that? And I will allow nobody to play in it but myself. So he built a high wall all around it and put up a notice board. Trespassers will be prosecuted. Trespassers? A person entering someone's land or property. Prosecuted. Continue with a view to its completion. He was a very selfish gent. The poor children had now, now here to play. They tried to play on the road. But the road was very dusty and full of hard stones. And they did not like it. They used to wander round the high wall when their lessons were over and talk about the beautiful garden inside. How happy we were there, they said to each other. Then the spring came and all over the country there were little blossoms and little birds. Only in the garden of the selfish giant it was still winter. The birds did not hear to sing in it as there were no children and the trees forgo to blossom. Once a beautiful flower put its head out from the grass, but when it saw the notice board, it was so sorry for the children that it slipped back into the ground again and went off to sleep. The only people who were pleased were the snow and the frost. Spring has forgotten this garden. They cried, so we will live here all the year round. The snow covered up the grass with her great white clock and the frost painted all the trees silver. Then they invited the north wind to stay with them and he came. He was wrapped in furs. Furs is the old forms of clothing. And he rode all about the garden and blew the chimney pots down. This is a delightful spot, he said. We must ask the hail. Hail, pallet of frozen rain which fall in showers. Hail on a visit. So the hail came. Every day for three hours he rattled on the roof of the castle till he broke most of the slates. And then he ran round and round the garden as fast as he could go. He was dressed in grey and his breath was like ice. 
I cannot understand why the spring is so late in coming, said the selfish giant. As he sat at the window and looked out at his cold white garden. I hope there will be a change in the weather. But the spring never came nor the summer. The autumn gave golden fruit to every garden. But to the giant's garden she gave none. He is too selfish, she said. So it was always winter there, and the north wind, and the hail, and the frost, and the snow danced about through the trees. One morning, the giant was laying awake in bed when he heard some lovely music. It sounded so sweet to his ears that he thought it must be the king's musicians passing by. It was really only a little linnet singing outside his window. Linnet, a small brown and grey bird with a red front found in Europe. But it was so long since he had heard a bird singing, sing in his garden that it seemed to him to be the most beautiful music in the world. Then the hail stopped dancing over his head and the north wind ceased roaring, ceased, bumped to an end, and a delicious perfume came to him through the open casement. I believe the spring has come at last, said the giant, and he jumped out of bed and looked out. What did he see? He saw a most wonderful sight through a little hole in the wall the children had crept in and they were sitting in the branches of the trees. In every tree that he could see there was a little child and the trees were so glad to have the children back again that they had covered themselves with blossoms and were waving their arms gently above the children's heads. The words were flying about and twittering with delight, twittering, chirping, and the flowers were looking up through the green grass and laughing. It was a lovely scene. Only in one corner was it still winter. It was the farthest corner of the garden and in it was standing a little boy. He was so small that he could not reach up to the branches of the tree, and he was wandering all around it, crying bitterly. The poor tree was still quite covered with frost and snow, and now a wind was blowing and roaring above it. Climb up, little boy, said the tree, and it bent its branches down as low as it could but the boy was too tiny and the giant's heart melted as he looked out how selfish i have been he said now i know why spring would not come here i will put that poor little boy on the top of the tree and then i will knock down the wall and my garden shall be the children's playground for ever and ever he was really very sorry for what he had done so he crept downstairs and opened the front door quite softly and went out into the garden but when the children saw him, they were so frightened that they all ran away and the garden became winter again. Only the little boy did not run, for his eyes were so full of tears that he did not see the giant coming. And the giant stole up behind him and took him gently in his hand and put him up into the tree. And the tree broke at once into blossoms and the birds came and sang on it and the little boy stretched out his two arms and flung them round the giant's neck and kissed him and the other children when they saw that the giant was not wicked any longer wicked morally bad 
came running back and with them came the sipping. It is your garden now, little children, said the giant. And he took a great axe and knocked down the wall. And when the people were going to market at 12 o'clock, they found the giant playing with the children in the most beautiful garden they had ever seen. All day long they played and in the evening they came to the giant to bid him goodbye. But where is your little companion, he said, the boy I put into the tree. The giant loved him the best because he had kissed him. We don't know, answered the children. He has gone away. You must tell him to be sure and come here tomorrow, said the giant. But the children said that they did not know where he lived and he had never seen him before. And the giant felt very sad. Every afternoon when school was over, the children came and played with the giant. But the little boy whom the giant loved was never seen again. The giant was very kind to all the children, yet he longed for his first little friend and often spoke of him. How I would like to see him, he used to say. Years went by and the giant grew very old and feeble. Feeble? Weak. He could not play about anymore. So he sat in a huge armchair and watched the children at their games and admired his garden. I have many beautiful flowers, he said. But the children are the most beautiful flowers of all. One winter morning, he looked out of his window as he was dressing. He did not hate winter now, for he knew that it was merely spring asleep and that the flowers were rusting. Suddenly, he rubbed his eyes in wonder and looked and looked. It certainly was a marvelous sight. Marvelous, wonderful. In the farthest corner of the garden was a tree quite covered with lovely white blossoms. Blossoms to produce flower. Its branches were all golden and silver fruit hung down from them. And underneath it stood the little boy he had loved. Downstairs ran the giant in great joy and out into the garden. He hastened to he hastened to be quick to go something he hastened across the grass and came near to the child who are do do is an old fashioned word for you said the giant and a strange o oh, fell o oh, wonder fell on him and he knelt before the little child knelt, fell to one's knees, and the child smiled on the giant and said to him, You let me play once in your garden, today you shall play in paradise. And when the children ran in that afternoon, they found the giant lying dead under the tree, all covered with white blossoms. Exercises A. Questions 1. How did the giant show his selfishness? Answer. The giant put up a huge sign that said that trespassers would be prosecuted. He also built a huge wall around the garden so that no one could get inside his garden. 2. When did the giant realize that spring had returned to his garden? Answer. One morning, the giant heard the sweet song of a linnet. The hail and the north wind stopped roaring, and he could smell a lovely perfume through the window. 3. The children ran away when the giant came downstairs, seeing the giant. What would you have done had you been one of the little children? Explain your answer. Answer. I would have also run away because I would not want the giant to scold me or 
hit me for playing in his garden. He looked very angry and would lose his temper on me. 4. Had the giant had not helped the little boy, how differently might the story have ended? Write your answer in detail. Answer. Had the giant not helped the little boy, Spring might have never returned to the garden. It would have remained covered in snow. The garden would have rotted after many years and the giant would realize his mistake. He would then invite the children to play in his garden, but they would not listen. 5. Who was the boy? Why do you think he returned? Answer. I think the boy was an angel who had come to melt the giant's heart and make him kind. I think that he returned to remind the giant of his kindness and to take him to paradise as a reward. B. Reference to context. The, read these lines from the story and then answer the questions. 1. The only people who were pleased were Snow and Frost. A. Why are Snow and Frost spoken of a people? Answer. Personification. To give them human attributes like emotions of happiness, anger, arrogance, etc. Enhance the impact of their presence in the giant's life and also for lyric quality lyrical quality b when do snow and frost feel pleased answer when they realize spring would never come to the giant's garden thereby giving them a permanent home c what do snow and frost do after this Answer. Snow covers the grass. Frost paints the trees silver. They invites the north wind to come and stay with them. Who brings hail with him? 2. And the giant's heart melted as he looked out. A. What makes the giant look out? Answer. The lovely music of a linnet singing. B. What has he seen outside to make his heart melt? Answer. Birds singing, flowers green, trees, children playing, except one child who was too young to climb a tree by himself. C. What does he then decide to do? Answer. He puts the small boy on the tree, knocks down the garden wall and lets the children play there without restrictions. C. Words and Meaning 1. Search through the story and find out A. Which words are used for the reasons or features of the weather? Answer. Snow, frost, north wind, hail are the elements of the weather b how are they described are they male or female snow and autumn are referred to as she or female while the north wind and hail are described as he or male c for which other things in the list below do we sometimes use the word she? There are three. Answer is a ship, a country, and a car are sometimes referred to as she. Two, in English there are many ways of saying the same thing. For example, one winter morning, he looked out of his window. He looked out of his window one winter morning. Out of his window, he looked one winter morning. Try to put these sentences in a different way. A. 
they played all day long answer all day long they played b the giant ran downstairs in great joy answer in great joy the giant ran downstairs c the children had crept in through a little hole in the wall answer through a little hole in the wall the children had crept in d for 3 hours every day he rattled on the roof of the castle answer he rattled on the roof of the castle for 3 hours every day 3 all these words have the vowel e repeated what are the words a not awake asleep b pleasantly and musically sweetly c appeared looked as if seemed d weak and old feeble e an old word for you d 4 do you know when and why we use these words one juggernaut juggernaut a large powerful force or organization that cannot be stopped. 2. Mammoth Mammoth, extremely large. A type of large hairy elephant with tusks with no longer exits. Titanic Titanic, extremely powerful, strong, important or large. 4. Colossus Colossus, a very large statue or building. Thanks for listening. For new videos, don't forget to subscribe my channel. And if you like my videos, please share and like.